Right. Uh, good evening, guys. Am I audible and visible to, to all of you? Am I audible and visible? Can I get a confirmation on the chat box saying uh, yes or no? Guys, uh, am I audible and visible uh, to all of you? Can I get a uh, heads up on the chat box uh, with a yes or a no? Right, good. So, uh, a very good evening and uh, welcome uh, to Nanaska and welcome to the operational case study for May 2024. So Mark here, so I'll be conducting the lectures alongside uh, Mr. Chandra who will be the lead lecturer for MCS and SCS also. So he will also be part of the OCS panel and both of us will be taking you through this course over the next six to seven weeks. Right. Okay. So the oper operational case study. So this is going to be the very first case study that you guys are going to face in your SEMA journey, which is why it's quite important that you follow the right methodology, that you do the right thing in order to make you pass. So we are here at Nanaska on this introductory session, highlighting and letting you know, look here, this is what we do, this is what we cover in class, and let me take you through a glimpse of uh, the case study that we have for May 2024. Quite interesting, a very interesting, a very unique industry, I would say, so far over the last, uh, let's say, seven to eight years, I have not seen this industry at all. It's really new, uh, but it's interesting, right? So it's, it's new to all of us here. So it's, it's, it's going to be a very interactive session. You, you are going to ask me questions. I'm going to ask you questions. You are going to come up with inputs and say, look here, if it's this, why not this, right? It's, it's going to be a scenario-based discussion that we're going to have, especially when it comes to the prism analysis, right? So before I, before I dive into how we take you through in this course, right? Let me give you a quick overview of the operational level case study. Right, a quick overview of the operational level case study. So you see on the screen, I've broken up your operational case study into a 65-35 uh, pie chart. So what is 65%? 65% is your theory, 35% is about your business applications that you've got to know which you will develop over time when you attempt mock papers, when you attend the case study discussions, when you do the industry analysis, when you do uh, a few mock papers, you're going to slowly get into that. But you can see the heavy weight is on the theory. So the theory weight is roughly 65%. If you see that, you can see the theory weightage is about 65%. Now, what do I mean by this? What do I really mean by this? Do you have a 65% focus or maybe majority of the knowledge that you've got to have will be based on the theory. What is your theory? Your theory on your P1, F1 and your E1. So now again, that 65% I've broken down into the three subjects where majority of it is coming from which subject? Majority of it is coming from your P1 subject. Majority is coming from your P1 subject, right? So now you, you get a glimpse of what you need to know, what you need to do to pass this case study. To pass this case study, right? So therefore, this is very critical when it comes to your theory. Business applications, don't worry. They are going to develop it over time. We are going to, you know, get used to it, you know, when you answer a few mock papers, when you attend these discussions, you're going to you know, get those insights. We give you a 
case study analysis, a prison analysis, an industry analysis, a possible issue document. So when you go through all of those things, you're going to get an understanding of what these things are about. So don't worry about it. So when it comes to your theory, when it comes to your theory, right? So uh, you know we have uh, you have three subjects at OCS, which is which I told you earlier as well, which is none other than your P1, your F1, and your E1. Right. So when it comes to P1, I'm sure majority of you would be coming down from the FLP route, right? But still, even though you are from the FLP or the OTQ pathway, whatever it is, right? We are going to give you a refresher of these three subjects. We are going to give you a refresher. A theory refresher on P1, E1 and F1. So pretty much E1 would be a recorded session, but you will have live sessions for F1 and P1, which is the highly tested, which are the highly tested areas in terms of theory. Right? So when you look at F1, it's pretty much what you need to know is about your accounting standards. We have about five or six accounting standards in your syllabus. For example, like IAS2 inventories, IAS16 property plan and equipment, IAS36 impairment, right? IAS10 events after the reporting date, IFRS5, IFRS16. So you have a few about six to seven standards that you've got to know that you will be tested in the case study. So again, we do a refresher for your. F1 as well. So this refresher is applicable to F1, P1, E1, all three subjects. So you might be thinking, look here, okay, 65%, 60 to 65% of the questions of how I need to pass, I need to know my theory. Yes, you need to know your theory, but how are you going to get back to that, you know, that how are you going to regain that knowledge, refresh that knowledge? Don't worry. We've got you covered. We have three sessions, or rather two sessions each for P1. Two sessions for F1 to cover your refresh theory. So there we will not be focusing on the entire F1 P1 syllabus, but we'll be picking the main areas that are consistently tested on the exam, which we think is crucial, is critical for you to pass this exam. So keep that in mind. We've got you covered, even though I say that there is a majority of the portion is coming down from your theory. Then the 35% of business applications. It's all about how you deal with it practically, right? For example, if the examiner has asked, okay, what would be what would be the ideal costing system that is applicable to our company? Now that's pretty much a theoretical question, plus you have a little bit of applications there. How are you going to address it? So you're going to talk about the current costing system, the inherent flaws of it, how what would be the proposed costing system? They are going to propose to the organization to employ or to deploy to improve its costing mechanism. It may be that the company is already using traditional absorption costing. You are saying, look here, this is outdated. These are the inherent flaws. I need to switch to an activity-based costing approach. Then what are the benefits of the activity-based costing approach to the business? Now that's your business application part. It may have it may have a uh, it may allow you to employ a more consistent pricing strategy. Your sales strategy would be more sound. You know the actual basis on which your costing is done. Things like that, right? Then uh, you're pretty much not allowing any under costing or over costing because you're actually allocating costs based on their resource consumption in ABC. Things like that. Now there, it had a blend of both your theory and your business application, the practical side of it. So likewise, we are going to learn a lot of things, right? In this case study discussion, when it comes to preparing you for the o OCS exam, right? So now, what do we have in store for you? So let me let me list down the things that we are going to go through. Let me list down the things that we are going to go through. So number one. So you will be given a pre-scene by scene, right? The pre-scene issue date is today, if I'm not mistaken. So you will be given a pre-scene document by scene. Now, what is this pre-scene document all about? What is this pre-scene document all about?
right? So you get a pre seen by SEMA. Now, what is this pre seen document all about? Now, that is about a company that you're going to study for this case study, and your questions, the scenarios, all will be based on that particular company. We have a very interesting company, a company that manufactures, a company that manufactures saddles for horses. Now, what is a saddle? How is it manufactured? Where is it used? Is there a market for saddles? What's the difference between a saddle and a bridle? Right? So, so those are few things that we've got to know in this context. That's why it's very interesting. Right? We are going to learn some things maybe we've never explored so far in our lives right something completely new right so so let's let's tune up ourselves for it right so number one is your pre seen issued by SEMA then somewhere here right so we give you a pre seen analysis document We call this the KYP, right? We call this the KYP. We call this the KYP. What does KYP stands for? Know your pre -seen. So KYP is all about, it's a quick snapshot of your pre -seen. We're giving you a shorter version of it so that you, you get some time to familiarize yourself with the pre -seen. So that has a lot of images, context diagrams, right? So basically it's a summarized version of your pre seen along with any relevant theory areas, maybe a financial analysis towards the end of it, ratio analysis towards the end of it. So the financial analysis is also part of your pre seen analysis, which we call the KYP, know your pre seen Then next up we have the industry analysis. So can someone say what does KYI stands for? If KYP is know your industry, know your pre -seen. KYI is simply know your industry. So we have these two documents to start off. Know your pre -seen, a snapshot of the pre -seen, a quick analysis of your pre -seen. Number two, the industry analysis. Now why do we need industry analysis? Now this is where we talk about the industry of this uh, saddles for horses. What is the market size? Who are the competitors in the market? So we, towards the end of the KYI, we have a real world company very similar to our pricing company. Now these are nominal companies, right? So we, we identify a real world existing company very similar to that of our pricing company where we try to understand in the real context, how do they operate, right? What are the social media platforms they are using? What sort of promotions are they using? How are they marketing the product? What are their sales channels? What are the challenges they are facing? Right? So it's going to be a real, real world example based on a real world existing company, which is very similar to our recent company. That is about the industry analysis, which is KYI. Again, you don't have to study this KYI because industry would be very important as you go up. That is in your MCS and the SCS, in your industry will be very important. But in OCS, some might say industry is not that important, but I would say it's, it's, uh, so it's I mean, you need to have a decent knowledge of the regarding the industry that you are talking about. I mean, the suggestions, the recommendations, the proposals you are putting forward should be in line with that particular industry, right? Therefore, we need to have a decent knowledge. I won't say I won't say thorough knowledge. I would say a decent knowledge on the pre on the industry that we are facing. So pretty much the saddles manufacturing industry, right? Relating to horses. That's number two. Know your industry. Then number three. It's KYP.
Then we have the KYI. Number three, we have the deep guy. Right? And number three, we have the deep guy. Now, what is this deep guy? So the deep guy is all about where we really dive down deep into the crazy, understand the scenarios, understand the theories that would be important in terms of uh, analyzing this crazy in terms of knowing the knowledge and the understanding that we've got to have, right? So in the deep time, we really deep dive deep into the crazy, look at the scenarios, okay? What are the possible theory areas relating to the particular crazy chapter? paragraph or section then from that okay what could be the areas that you need to have in mind in terms of the theory because i said at the start 60 to 70 percent page weightage of your paper is more biased towards your theory knowledge so it's vital it's critical that you have a proper understanding of your theory therefore here we try to do is take the praising in that particular uh, area section of the praising we try to understand what is the relevant theory area? What could be the possible questions that could be asked from this context? And we are going to give you an analysis, a deep dive into the crazy. Right? That's number three. Then we have our most important thing. Off. Right. So number four, we have your mocks. Right. Number four, we have your mocks. Now, what what are these mocks all about? So we give you about ten mock papers. Right. Basically, a simulation of your exam. We are we practice in class, right? So the first mock paper, right? I can show you how one looks looks like. So this could be a, a similar section of the mock paper, right? Or basically a, a scenario you get in your real exam. What does it talk about? So you, so I mean, in the exam, it's very practical, right? You get an email from your boss, which you got to reply. That is going to be your answer. So that reply is what you've got to develop that skill of crafting a nice reply to the question or to the query that has been raised to you by your boss, which you get by means of an email. Here you see that you get an email from the finance manager. You get an email from the finance manager, right? So what is it about? It's about card and reporting and supply issues. So we have two issues to address. I'm finalizing the financial statements. Two events happen, event one, event two. And you, the question is given here. He's asking you your input on this. Explanation of the two events for the quarter ender and how will it affect the financial statements? Now that is what your answer is going to be about, right? Now this is, can anyone say, what is the relevant accounting standard here that is being tested? So I'm just taking you through a, a sample mock paper of how a particular section would look like. Now, this is just one section. In your exam, you will have four sections like this, right? Four sections, three hours, right? First 15 minutes for you to familiarize, and then you get three hours, four sections, which you need to answer. Pretty much, you, so you get about 45 minutes per section, right? So then, can someone tell me, what is the relevant accounting standard that is being tested here? So you have two events which have happened after the your year end date. Now this is your year end date. There are two events that have happened. So what is the relevant accounting standard we are going to use here to identify as to how this will affect the financial statements? Anyone, any anyone who uh, would have an understanding of this? Of course, you have to have it now, right? So. Anyone with the answer? What is the relevant accounting standard here? What are we talking about? 
What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Anyone? Is it IAS 10? Right, events after the reporting day. So accordingly, you have to decide whether which event is adjusting, which event is non-adjusting. So your standard tells events after the reporting day, right? If I'm reading that to you quickly. There are two types of events, right? Adjusting events, non-adjusting events, right? So adjusting events and non-adjusting events is what is defined by IAS 10, that is events after the reporting day. So under adjusting events, you've got to see whether there is evidence. Evidence of existence of the reporting date, right? If there is no evidence, it will be a non-adjusting events. If there is evidence of existence at the if there is any evidence of existence at the reporting date, yes, you have to adjust it. If there is no evidence, you will not adjust it. So accordingly, first one, the first event is about a fire. Now, was there any evidence of existence at the reporting date? A fire happening on 5th of January. Your reporting date is 31st of December. So in 31st of December, was there any evidence of existence of this fire? Yes or no? What do you think? Should we adjust this to our accounts for last year? Or should we account it for this year? Since it's happening in January 2024. Should I account for it in December or should I account for it in 2024? What do you think as per the standard? Is, will this fall under? The adjusting event category or non-adjusting event category? Simple question you have to ask is, was there any evidence of existence at the reporting date? <coughs> was there any evidence of existence at the reporting date? What do you think? Yes or no? Come on guys, I need some answers. What do you think? Now the reporting date is 31st December. The fire is happening on the 5th of Jan. So is there any evidence of existence at the reporting date? On 31st of December, is there any evidence of existence? What do you think? Yes or no? Guys, let's talk, right? So it's going to be a case study discussion. So it's going to be really, really two way, not just one way, right? So you need to come up with your answers, your suggestions. There is nothing as such called a wrong answer. We all are here to learn. Even I am learning. You are learning. So it's all about that collaborative approach that we've got to take, that interactive approach that we've got to take in order to succeed in this case study. Right? Yeah, there is no evidence. So I will not adjust this. Fire. No evidence. It's 31st December is your reporting date. Next. So first event, you will say event one, according to the standard, you specify the standard, you quote the standard, IES 10, there is no evidence of existence at the reporting date, therefore we will not adjust that. Event two, one of our suppliers paid us 25,000 in settlement of a legal case that we have taken out against them in September 2022. Now we are in January 2024, reporting date is 31st December 2023. Now, is there any evidence of existence that legal case has been settled on January, but we are looking at evidence of existence at the reporting date, that is 31st December, but we have taken this out against them in September 2022. So what, what do you think? The question you have to ask is, is there evidence at the reporting date? Existence of evidence at the reporting date. Yes or no? Answers please. Yes or no? Yes. Why? You have taken this out against in September 2022, meaning you would have had a provision, your case is running. It's December 2023, your settlement is on Jan 10th. Obviously, you have to account it for the previous year, you have to adjust it because there is evidence of existence at the reporting date. 
the eyes epidermal lobe existence and the reporting there. so just just a quick uh, example i took you through so your mock papers your exam will be very similar to this right almost similar similar to this that so far we've been able to predict the majority of questions that areas that will be turn up in the exams all the course we cover 10 mock papers right all because we cover 10 mock papers right there has been our strength so far so we try to cover spread our eyes into every possible area that could be tested in your exam along with that we have something called possible issues pi possible issues now possible issues apart from your mocks now mocks mock 1 we will discuss in class together i will teach you how to get the answer points how to arrange your answer how to structure your answer the format of your answer format of your reply email all of it we will discuss in mock 1 mock 2 onwards the battle is all yours you attempt it you send it to us our team will mark it and give you the feedback and then you for about four mock papers you have a one to one session with us i will be part of it our back end team two members will be assigned to you so you will get time to discuss on your areas to improve before you attempt your next mock paper so likewise for about four mock papers we assign one to one discussions for you after you do it so attempting mocks is one of the critical elements then possible issues is where we try to discover okay areas all possible areas examiner put task on the exam it's pretty much a forecasting and anticipation of what could be the areas the examiner could reach out to ask on the exam again it's a pretty much a pretty li a pretty significant document right yeah we are trying to cover from each area of e1 f1 p1 including and scenarios of the case so we are trying to anticipate and forecast the area examiner could ask from you on the exam right then you have your i told you i give we give you three request theory sessions that is for your e1 one and your p1 rt is for your refresh theory right so you get two sessions for f1 two sessions for p1 and a recorded session for e1 to refresh your theory so they are will be covering the main theory elements theory areas that will be covered on your exam paper part of your exam paper right so then we give you a something called a power mock something called a power mock and a f1 mock that is a financial mock there of course you don't have to attempt it we give you the paper alongside the answer reference f1 mock it will cover all pretty much all possible areas with regards to f1 that the examiner could throw up on the exam power mock again we have segregated into three power mock will have three parts e1 f1 p1 the main areas that could come up from the respective theory area and it gives you a guidance on what points you have to cover in your answer in case you get a similar question on the exam day. right that's about the power right then we run through a set of uh, then we have uh, also we go through a set of a past paper analysis they are we give you the relevant resources and then uh see okay what would be the possible questions in terms of the past papers what are the questions that have been thrown up by the examiner previously and how we need to be ready about it. how we need to be ready with it right so this is a glimpse of your mocks which you saw as critical success factors in the previous slide so for you to pass your case study these are the documents these are the guidance that we offer you from nanaska for you to pass the pre seed analysis the industry analysis the deep dive the in depth analysis of your pre seed you get 10 mock papers possible issues refresh theory on your e1 f1 p1 Power mock and the financial mock and the past paper analysis. So it's very comprehensive, right? 
We are going to we are going to run a marathon over the next six to seven weeks for your exam. Right? So your cooperation is critical. So completing mocks by the relevant time is very critical. So for you to pass, I would say knowing your mock papers, right? Doing them on time, completing them would be the critical success factor. Most critical success factor would be this. Because they are, we are trying to simulate the exam. We are going to attend about eight, nine papers by yourself. We are going to mark them and give you the feedback. The more and more you do, the more and more you familiarize yourself to that exam context. You know how questions are you know, structured and how you need to attack each and every question. So we teach you the approach, how you get answers, right? the structure you have to follow in answering the format, right? What are the contents that you need to include? How much you should write for each question based on the weightage to all of you. Time management, typing, all of it. So we have an exercise called uh, WPM, which is your words per minute that you will start tracking from the second week of class itself, right? So we normally say you have to at least be over 35. On average, over 35 words per minute, you should be able to type. You should be able to type. Right? So any questions up to this point, I'll, I'll take a quick one minute off. I'll give you to ask me questions on the areas that we've discussed so far. So is everybody clear on the plan and what is expected from you and what you expect from us? Is it clear with you? If you are clear, can you quickly drop a note on the chat box saying that you are clear. If you have a question, by all means, please do ask. If you have a clarification, please do ask. All right, so I'll give you one minute. Let's uh, quickly revisit what we've discussed. So if you are clear, let me know that you are clear on the chat box. If you have a question or a clarification, please do ask that as well. Yeah? So I want everyone to, uh, everyone to uh, have their hands on the keypad. Can you all uh, give me some feedback on it? Good. So, okay, I'll explain DD again. Very good. What about the others? What about the others? So many majority of you are saying that you are clear. Good. So uh, Tammy is asking, Augustina is asking me to explain again on DD. So deep dive is where we take the precinct document, the precinct, take the respective areas from the precinct, understand which area is more relevant to this in terms of your theory, even if one even and try to develop questions and give you some insight, analysis on what could be the possible question you could uh, see from the, on the exam day. Right? So it's, it's, it's an in-depth analysis of each and every section of your precinct. We try to relate a relevant uh, theory area or if not, how could the examiner twist and turn those areas of your precinct and throw at you at the exam? In that case, what are the things that you've got to know? So pretty much that's a glimpse. Those insights are what you get from the deep dive. Uh, Tammy, did I answer your question? Right. So this is a quick glimpse of what we are going to do in class. Right. So it, it, as I told you, it's going to be a marathon. Right. Not easy. Need your commitment, need your dedication. You've got to work with a plan. That's what is most important, right? You've got to work with a plan. It's by this date, you're going to do this. By this date, you're going to do this. So we give you a plan. Say by next week, you have to finish mock one, you have to do it. By the next week, you have to finish mock two and three, you've got to go for it. Likewise, because if you don't stick to that, what happens is end of the day, closer to the exam, we all get stuck, right? Piled up with work. We don't know what to do. So to avoid such exam pressure, to avoid such rush, closing the exam, we are going to give you some timelines. 
where you need to complete your mock paper so that we are not loaded up towards the exam day. Right? So we have time to relax. We have time to you know spread out our time and make sure that we manage this course according. Right. So that's about uh, what we are going to cover in in class. Right. So let me go back. So again, coming back to this slide, the critical success factors for you to pass this exam. Refresh your theory. Remember, theory accounts a major portion of your case study knowledge, right? Practice mock papers. I said we are going to go, to go through about 10 mock papers and you are going to, you are going to attempt about 8 or 9, right? Include the power mock and the financial mock. Words per minute. This is what I told you with regards to WPM, your typing speed. That's what matters, right? Faster you can type, it's, it's, it's not the content that you're going to type, it's the quality of your content. Then how can I write a quality content would be the next question you would ask. That's what we're going to discuss in mock one. Mock one, I'm going to take the paper, I'm going to give you right, some insights, I'm going to teach you how you take points as answers, how you develop answers, the structure you've got to follow in answering back to the examiner in terms of the email right then you have the pre-seen know-how is very important possible issues so it's all these comprehensive if you have this comprehensive knowledge from all these elements right from all these elements remember you're going to pass your case time. so our our program our course will also be focused on those areas so i'm sure that's going to help you a lot right so, if I have to touch base quickly on the pre scene that you've got this time. So, as I told you, so you have this company called Khanan as our case study this time, right? So, what they do is, so you, your role is that you're going to be a finance officer working within the finance department. Of Khan. So your role is a finance officer. You report to the finance manager. These are your tasks. So we'll detail, we'll go into detail, we'll break this down, break down your tasks into detail, break them into the relevant subject area, and I'll let you know what are the areas that you've got to have an understanding, have a knowledge of. Right? So a quick brief on the prism is that it makes and sells saddles for horse riding. Now, what is a saddle? This is a saddle, right? This is a saddle. Basically, what you keep on the horse that facilitates the rider a smooth ride. So that portion of it is a saddle. The bridle is what is a bridle? They manufacture only saddles, not bridles, right? Bridle is what you put to the horse. What you put to the mouth around its face that belt you have you know you control the direction and you control the horse those uh, those uh, uh, the accessories that you include from the mouth of the horse that will enable you to control and uh, direct the horse in the right direction that's the brittle but we are making not brittles we are making only saddles saddle is simply this what you want to the seat for the rider so you see the parts of the uh, parts of the saddle. So we are a company that manufactures saddles. Very interesting industry, right? So it's a private company. So they have the eyes read somewhere. Yeah, the owner's daughter it has, is a is fond of equestrian sports. Now, what is what are equestrian sports? What are equestrian sports? Basically, horse riding. Right, what you see mostly in uh, Olympics, right? You see horse riding, those I mean, those activities fall under equestrian sports, right? So then, the owner's daughter is a uh, fan of that. So you see about how the company started from scratch in 1905 06. They are operating in Europe. So if you look at the uh, horse population at the moment, I guess it's US that has a Larger number of sources, and then number two is in Europe, right? So you need to understand, establish the market size, and how they operate to all of it, right? So it's it's quite interesting. Right? 
Do you see a defeat on the industry as well? How the process of uh, manufacturing settles, right? So these are how their market share has evolved. So if you look at Canon's market share, so it's pretty much, it's pretty small, right? It's pretty small. Then uh, if you look at uh, here, you have the three types of products that they offer, the saddle range, the three types of products, your stroll, the meteor, and the common. Three types of, uh, three types of saddles which they manufacture. So here you see the organization structure, right? The John Cannon, Rena Gomez, Jack Newman, Ella Bird, and Louis Jamel, right? So that's the, you see it about the profile of the senior management, and then you see the respective teams, how they are structured, and then talk about the company operations. So our main revenue is coming from Keelan. Our main revenue is coming from Keelan, 65%. So remember, we are a company selling all throughout the globe, right? This is America, Europe, Asia, Keelan, all of it. Majority, 65% of the sale coming from Keelan. Uh, are the others also facing the similar issue? You can see my screen, right? Oh, okay. So these are the your production processes, the departments that it goes through, cutting, assembly, finishing, and packing. Then the packaging and the purchasing and supplies, the raw materials that are needed for the uh, manufacture of the saddles are given here. So we're going to talk about it. And then your employees, we have 55 employees. And then your financing, right? Not integrated, uh, operation standard absorption costing system. So obviously, the exam, on the exam day, examiner might ask, we are using a traditional costing system. What are the flaws? What are the options we have to switch in terms of costing system? You've got to know about marginal costing. You've got to know about absorption costing. All of them, right? Then you have the financials, income statement, right? The statement of financial position and the cash flow and a few budgetary numbers. So that's a glimpse of your case study that we are going to discuss. That we are going to analyze. Starting from Sunday, starting from Sunday, right? So I've given you the plan that we are going to follow for our case study. I've, uh, we've discussed on what we are going to do really in class. I've, we've spoken about the critical success factors that you've got to know for you to pass this case study. So, it, so it's going to be a collaborative approach, right? We are going to work together. We will have a back-end team who will support it, who will be supporting you in terms of uh, mock papers, assisting you, giving you feedback to all of it. So that's happening. So it's all about you giving your commitment, your cooperation, having a plan, sticking to the timelines, and getting done about with it. Right? So I hope you guys are clear. We did discuss about the overview, the critical success factors, and the composition of the case study which is the most important element that here I would say, the composition of the case study. So you need to understand the weightage that is being pushed, that is being applied on your theory elements. So it's very critical. So I want you to start today, right? You have your, you have your theory notes, start refreshing them. Take a set of OCS past papers, or take about two sets, you read two sets, you understand what are the key theory elements that are being tested in the case study, right? We are going to go through it separately, but still you can start your work now. Because theory is very critical. So get to know your theory, revise them, refresh them. That's going to be very easy for you to follow this course. So if you take these first two weeks <coughs> to brush up and polish your theory, that's going to give you a lot of benefits. That's going to give you a lot of benefits, I would say, right? So with that note, I will conclude the introductory session. I'm hoping to see all of you in class. Our first class is on the 24th and the timing will be communicated to you when you register. So when you register, you get access to our LMS as well, the learning management system where all these materials, all these documents, all the study support, mocks, videos, recordings, all will be stored, right? So the recorded lectures will be there plus 
we will have these hybrid lecture sessions as well, online and offline both. So we can meet, give you feedback, discuss, see what could be done to improve ourselves to all. Right? So that's the plan. And I hope to see all of you in class. So I hope you got something out of today's session. So let's talk more. There's a lot more to discuss. There's a lot more for us to learn, for us to explore, for us to understand in order that we go on this journey together to make you pass. Nanaska is always there to help you. We have a backend team also who is going to be getting in touch individually with you when you register for the course. So all that is planned and set up is all about your plan, your commitment and you giving in your best game so that you get through the operational level case study being the very first case study you're going to face in your SEMA journey. So we are going to lead, take you through the right path. We discuss our work, our course plan, what we have planned to in class to all of it. So with that note, I'm sure all of you would be confident closer to the exam to pass this, right? Which has been the case over the past, right? So we've been able to predict pretty much 80 to 90 percent or maybe over 90 percent of the things that come in the exam consistently over the past uh, few sessions if you could consult our students if you look at our testimonials that's what is evident right so thank you so much for being part of the introductory session i'll see you all in class on the 24th thank you and good night <coughs>